Okay. Hello, everybody. Sorry we're a couple minutes late. Um, I am here with my good friend, Jeff. And uh, how's it going today, Jeff? Good, good. Just got done a little bit of work, as always, over at the Fish Hotel and dropped off some packages, as always, as well at UPS. They uh, definitely know me by name by now. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just the, another standard day around uh, the shop, that's for sure. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I mean, we, everybody knows you're on the forum. I mean, you're one of our fish disease experts, uh, and you also are the owner of Fish Hotel, which uh, mm -hmm. uh, sells quarantine condition fish. And we greatly appreciate you on the forum, um, always helping out, always answering fish disease questions. Um, yeah. But I'm sure there's a lot that just people don't know about you. So why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started in the hobby and whatever else you'd like to share. Yeah, honestly, um, nothing special. I'm just some <laughs> random guy that uh, has a little bit of uh, obsessive compulsive and I stumbled into uh, fish disease and, you know, that that uh, I latched into that. And for whatever reason, uh, it, it grabbed my interest. And that's that's uh, that's what has held me here in this hobby the whole time that and tinkering. I'm a, I love to tinker. So I guess I'll start at the beginning again. Uh, I'm Jeff Durkheising. I now own uh, the Fish Hotel. I know a lot of you guys have probably worked with us or dealt with us before. Um, Sometimes it's pleasure, sometimes it's pain. <laughs> That's just the way it works with uh, quarantine fish. Unfortunately, you know they don't care about our schedules. They don't care about those things. They uh, they they're gonna have disease when they want or when they get diseases, and they're gonna be clean when they're clean. Like there's no rushing this, and that's that was a hard thing for me to learn. Um, but we'll get into a little bit of that later on and all that good stuff. But. Yeah, I've been running now the Fish Hotel for, I think we decided yesterday when we were chatting, what, four years? That was, yeah. We've yeah. now been buddies. And um, I started right when Humble left um, uh, Reef to Reef and I said, enough is enough over there, which uh, I bailed with them. And uh, we, we kind of been doing this whole Humble Fish and Reef thing now for four years. And that brought me to the point of, being able to quit my job just this year as a real estate agent and doing fish hotel full time. So it's wild. We went from a tiny little closet, which I think I had 35 square feet to now having just under a thousand square feet that's dedicated to purely quarantining fish and clean fish and getting clean fish out for the public. So they don't have to deal with all the nonsense that we do. And uh, I mean, I maybe, you know, I, I think not everyone understands the amount of work that goes into, um, you know, the business that you operate. Can you kind of share with us, you know, just to start, like what, what your days are like, what your weeks are like? Yeah, I mean, today uh, I started at 7 a.m. So that puts us at right now at a 12 hour day. And um, you kind of just got to be OK with that because. I guess you don't have to be okay with that, right? You can make you could make it work, but for me, I guess the important thing is um, I don't like to pack my fish until I absolutely have to, because I've had instances where they stayed in those boxes for three days, four days, and I felt, hey, maybe those six hours that I didn't pack them for, instead of packing them at 9 a.m. I pack them usually at four. Usually people that order from me don't get their tracking numbers until six o'clock. It's not because UPS hasn't scanned it yet. It's because I haven't brought it up there yet. I have right. until seven o'clock to get those fish up there. And I really try to get as close as I can so those fish can stay in those tanks as long as they can. And they don't have to be in those bags. I know it's silly, but that's the way that we do things. We do all those little tiny things that we feel ultimately give us a, a good experience and give other folks good experiences and maybe separate us just a little bit from, you know, your live aquarias and your other places along the lines like that. So, um, yeah, so I just show up every morning, 
usually before lights on, lights pop on at nine o'clock at the fish hotel. Um, we're feeding fish by 9 30, 10 o'clock. That's a good 45 minutes to an hour because we don't just feed them. We're feeding them and looking them over and making sure everybody's coming out in the morning, making sure colors are looking good. Even in the first 30 minutes, you should see your fish responding and up and moving. Even the wrasses, uh, the sand sleepers, by the time I get them into the clean side of things, most of them, their schedules have changed over, have now changed and they're kind of starting to get into the routine of um, being in a tank instead of being on the other side of the world. So um, my our expectations are every fish comes out and they eat and that's why they're this thick when you get them, you know, and then they get fed again around uh, 1 30, 2 o'clock. And then Mama Jan, which is my ma, uh, she's an incredible help. Uh, she's an incredible lady. And I am so blessed that uh, I get to now work with her every day. Um, she feeds them at the nighttime. She usually feeds them 6, 7 o'clock at night. So um, every, every fish that anybody's order, has also been uh, helped along by by my mo my mother. So as crazy as it is, we we have a little family business. Even at 42 years old, I'm not scared to say my mom helps me out <laughs> when uh, when I need it. So we uh, we do it. And again, if you've gotten fish from us, you'll you'll see that they're thick boys because we're not afraid to you know dump a, a whole lot of food into those tanks. So a lot of feeding, a lot of observing. Uh, honestly, that's a lot of my day. A lot of the rest of my day is helping other folks on the forum, constantly on there, just trying to help where I can, trying to spread anything that I know. You know, I mean, I honestly am, um, I'm probably the worst fish, local fish store as there that there is because I just, anything I know, y'all know. That's just the way it works. Like there are no secrets. If you want to know how Fish Hotel operates, watch one of my videos or, shoot me a message or ask for a picture. You're going to see clean fish in the clean room and you're going to see dirty, struggling fish in quarantine. Like I, I don't sugarcoat things. I think I even blasted out there my percentages of how well I do. I mean, I am as open of a book as you're going to be. So if you are thinking about doing this, if you're thinking about starting a local fish store, I mean, there's a go through the fish hotel forum. There's a lot of information there that is just there. And I put it out there for just that, right? Knowledge. I, I don't, I hate the way this industry works in secret. It, it's bizarre to me. I don't come from that. So it's very strange. And I, I probably ruffle a lot of feathers, but I don't care. <laughs> I just don't care. I'm just some guy. You know what I mean? I have nothing at stake. I don't have a I'm not a marine biologist at, you know, SeaWorld that is going to lose their job if they're wrong. <laughs> so but I don't care. You're doing everything the right way. I mean, that's why I love talking to you and, and, you know, and everything about you because you do everything the right way. You know, a lot of people don't realize it's not just a matter of just, you know, running the fish through medications and quarantining the fish. It's the conditioning that you have to do post quarantine to get them, yeah. you know, healthy enough to, you know, to, to be shipped out. And yeah. like you said, you're, you're hundred percent transparent. You're sharing your knowledge. I mean, and that, that's just awesome. I mean, we need more people like you in this hobby. Yeah, I agree. And that's, I mean, that in itself, right? Like just because they graduate out of the, the, the medicine soup doesn't mean we're out of the woods yet. Like I have a copper right. band right now that's in the clean room, but now he's decided, meh, I, I don't want to eat no more. I don't want to eat white worms. I don't want to eat mysis. I don't want to eat brine. Ate for an entire month and just that that's it. So it's important that extra two weeks that you force us to hold those fish, it's extremely important because there's so many things that happen in those two weeks. So. Right. You can't just ship them out of copper and go, good luck. They're clean. They're quarantined. You're, you're set. Go, you, go for it. That No, that's not, that's not, not how it works. works. That's yes. not how this works. So, so yeah, so it, is it a, 
is it a business plan for a ton of money and a ton of success without a ton of space? No, it's not. Right. You need space. You need specialty setups. You need to go into this business knowing that that's what it is, right? Like I'm going to set up my shop to do this. It's a very specialized thing. And so, right. yeah, I've, I mean, I absolutely love it. I love going in every day. I love the challenge of it. I love um, having something different. You know, I get to work with different fish, even though I work with a thousand wrasse every day, I get to work with that one specific grass that I haven't worked with yet, you know, or just those little things still keep me, keep me going, keep me excited about the hobby, you know? So yeah, I, I, I absolutely love it. And I don't know where I would be if I didn't have this for the last, I've been now doing this for as, at least on the saltwater thing side, side of things for, I think seven years, six, seven years, something like that. But my six, seven years as being me is more like 25 probably in study because I'm very. Because you have so much experience. And I mean, that's the thing, too, is like you have so many fish just, you know, coming through all the time. You, you get, you know, sometimes I'm probably what, 70, 80 fish at a time. Yeah, we're yeah. doing we're doing, yeah. 80, we're doing about 80 to 90 fish at a time. And it's not even that. It's just I I bury myself in it I, I i surround myself with the you know the folks that i look up to and even the folks i don't i still read their work right right so i feel like that's important to to try to to push yourself a little bit a little bit a little bit and that's if this hobby didn't have so many things to tinker with and play with and learn about and you know i, I would have lost interest that's why i don't get crazy about everything i just get crazy about the things i love right this is something i love and the, the challenge and just seeing something wrong that very first day fixing it and having that fish come out the other side is to me that's that's just super rewarding so even if it's something silly as like a yellow watchman goby i don't care it's not even the fish itself it's the it's the we took this tiny little guy that was stuck in this bag that was shipped to me this big and this big took him out of that soup and we got him going to the point where he's now fat and fighting with the other ones because that's that's how happy he is right you, you can't be very happy or you can't be sick and fighting at the same time that doesn't work right you know <laughs> so when they when they squabble a little bit i'm okay with it well and almost i kind of feel like that's a sign of a healthy fish yeah. i mean fish that are healthy are, are going to be more aggressive. I kind of think that fish that are healthy are, are maybe more frisky. Yeah. And, 100%. You know, and, and, you know, Hey, look, fish are going to fight over territory and everything else. So that's what uh, happens. Yeah. In, in little tanks like that. Cause and people, they, they settle it. They get fine. I mean, if it's, if it's, there's a point, right? There's, there's the little nipping and the little, I'm getting, I'm, this is my space. And then there's the, problems right i'm right? gonna kill I mean, you don't give me don't get it <laughs> twisted i'm not saying let your fish battle it out i'm just saying when i see these fish come in they're barely swimming but by the time they're coming out they're they have enough of that energy to be picking and choosing their mates and picking and choosing where their little territories are going to be and things like that and i love seeing that to me they're acting like fish at that point yeah they're not hiding behind the rocks yeah or out yeah. in front like here i am and you know this exactly. is my tank and let's fight so yeah. being that you have i mean you have so much experience now and and you know you have constantly fish coming and going and kind of the the topic of this live stream if you you've had a lot of experience dealing with your anema treating yeah. your anema um so maybe you could first we'll we'll start out maybe just tell us what your anema is because that that's not everyone worst, is, right? is familiar. Yeah, but not everyone yeah, even yeah. knows what your NEMA even is. What I'm going to do is while you're doing that, I've got a little image slide here. I'm going to play that will show um, people watching this video what a your NEMA looks like on a fish. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, 
it, that's it's really hard to sum up what uranema is in regards to what you're going to see right because uranema is like that sneaky little disease that kind of slowly picks off your fish most of the time and it does it incognito like you don't even know that it's really happening you know something is happening you know there's something off but you can't quite put your finger on it because nothing's showing up and so it gets extremely frustrating it's an extremely frustrating disease and kind of the worst part about it is um it's really hard to tell it's really hard to tell between that and bacterial infections it's hard to tell between that or um like on the yellow tangs a lot of times we just see the redness from changing of salinities and things like that just just that little bit of redness it's hard to tell until it's a little too late and then you're like oh no right right and then you're you're oh poop you're you're six seven eight fish into your 12 fish stocking stock you know uh, and you're like okay something's wrong here we got to fix it and then you start going in the forums right oh no what do we do and then you hit your forum and it's like first thing it says this is the one disease you don't want in your tank and everybody's like oh no right and i feel you i I'm the same way. I despise this disease. I've had to deal with this disease now for the whole time I've I've been doing this. So let me ask you this though. Okay, so I mean, most people know, you know, and I'm playing it again. Most people know that uranema is the red sores that you see on chromosomes. Yeah, chromosomes. sometimes you'll, you'll see it on anthea. Sometimes you see it on angelfish and butterfly fish, but it's always chromis and anthea are the the two primary suspects what other fish have you seen uranema red sores on like i'm playing right i now? would say honestly butterfly fish are probably worse well they're it's butterfly it, it's all of them <laughs> it's butterflies angels um damsels antheus um uh, what about chromis but i don't even deal with chromis yet because i'm not even that far along yet figuring this thing out um it's pretty much anything that has the large scales yeah if you you're seeing the picture um, yeah. that just went through anything that have those large scales that you're seeing um are the worst it seems like it tucks in underneath those scales and then embeds itself so anything that's small scale like your tangs you never really see it on um blennies i don't ever see it on stuff like that it, it's real rare but the problem is, is you don't need to see it. It'll still kill your fish. Right. It gets in their gills too. Yeah, that's the problem. We it you were actually gills. You were telling me yesterday it's kind of interesting. I hadn't really thought about this, that it gets in their gills, and you're saying that sometimes you're seeing um like redness around the gill area, almost like it would look like ammonia burn, but it's actually uranema um afflicting them near their gills. So that's another thing people need to watch out for, I guess. <laughs> Well, I guess I'm to the point where I feel like you just, with your anemia, we almost have to just treat it like every fish okay. has it because there's, it's almost impossible for you to buy a fish and just know today if your fish has your anemia, right? It's one right. of those, one of those things where you either have to put it in a tank by itself and let the disease fester and then you're going to know right like you're going to have a dead fish you're going to have a red spot you're going to have something that you can scrape and see right you're going to know or you watch it for a week it, it gets through looks good you throw it in your tank and all of a sudden a year and a half goes by and something starts happening right because a lot of the tanks we're good with uranema being in our tanks we're as I know that's wild to think right but uranema isn't terrible all the time right it's when we start getting little nips and scrapes and bruises and bumps 
that's when we start really having problems if your tank had the uranema. So I guess I don't have an answer. So to me, what we do, that I guess that's all I can answer this with, is Fish Hotel and me personally, is everything is now going through formalin and tea tree oil. Okay. That's what? where we're at. Let's let's so let, let's start first with the formalin because that's something you know we, we've tried other methods of eliminating yeah. uranema. You know, we tried metronidazole, we tried some other things, but so basically people get fish in and they let's just say they want to they want to prophylactically treat for mm -hmm. um for, for uranema. Now a lot of people will prophylactically treat with copper, but copper is not enough. They have to do they have to not use for formalin. Uranema. They have to use formalin with copper. How would somebody that wants to prophylactically treat for uranema, how would they use formalin to to do that? On yeah, animal? so I don't know, right? Like this is one of those things where we're getting into those gray zones, but we'll stay out of like the talk of how good formalin is and is it good for us and is it because it's not, right? We all know that it's just not a great, it's not right. a good thing. It's a carcinogen. It is what it if, is. Right. If you don't have to use it, don't. If you don't have to be around it, don't be. <laughs> it's just it's just not great stuff. Now, with that being said, it's the old salts have been using it forever. The zoos all use it use it. It's the tried and true method. Um and it works. That's that's all there is to it, right? So with the formalin for us, we do a ten, we do the 10 day treatment. Um, so if you're running copper, uh, we run it just a hair lower than if you don't have copper in your system. So if you're gonna run um, all your fish through our quarantine, you would get them in, they would go straight into their copper, uh, their copper tanks. We actually keep our copper tanks, um, we never go below 2.2 in our copper tank. Okay. And um, you're using I, copper power, correct? Yeah. Yeah. We use copper power, copper safes, anything you want to use there. Um, even when we um, get new batches in, they all go directly in 2.2. So okay. our our velvet and our ick are, are kind of covered right off the top. Boom. No worries. And then um, now uh, the fish are taking uh, tea tree bath oil before they go into even our quarantine systems. So some people, um, including I believe TSM, do formalin baths. You can use formalin to do that. Again, me, I want to use the least amount of formalin as I can because I just I want to get away from it. I don't. I only use formalin because I have to. That's the that's the that's the truth. So um, if you're going to run it. I run copper, so we run our formalin at 0.9 milliliters every 10 gallons. Okay. Um, if you're gonna run just formalin by itself, I don't really know why you would. To me personally, if you're gonna run them through formalin, might as well just run them through copper. Right. It, you know, like if you're if you're at that point, just hit them, hit them, get them done, and get them into a clean take. Be done with it. Move on. Um, so let me just recap. So what you're doing is you're running fish in 2.2, 2.3 parts per million copper power. Just when they come in the first day. And, and then, then we run it up to 2.45. And then and then you're alongside, you're dosing 0 0.9 uh, milliliters per 10 gallons formalin, and you're doing that every 24 hours for 10 days, correct? Correct. Yep. For the okay. first 10 days that they're with us, they're getting that formalin. So for the last four days of quarantine, they're just chilling. I'm just letting them just kind of do their thing, let them kind of recover before they get into the clean tanks. Because what I've found is even though I'm treating with the formalin, it doesn't necessarily mean that fish still isn't going to die from uranema. Right. Now, why I say that is, is the formalin is going to clean it up. It's going to get all of it off of the surface of the fish. But then a lot of times septus runs comes in and wipes out the fish from all the secondary stuff. So did 
your anema kill that fish or did the bacteria infection kill the fish? It doesn't matter, right? But to me, that all falls into the uranema's fault category. Right, right. So, any fish with uranema is also going to have a secondary bacterial infection. Almost they every have, time. They go hand in hand, right? Yeah, almost every single time. And so um, those four days is kind of my cushion for that to happen. As okay. crappy as that is. Um, if I'm going to lose something, I'm going to lose them in those four days before they get over into the clean tanks. Okay. So just to recap, just, you know, for, so people are clear, you treat with copper power at between 2.2 and 2.3. I think you said you ramp it up to maybe like 2.4. Yep. 2.45, 2.4, somewhere in there is where we keep it at. And then if you dose 0 0.9 milliliters per 10 gallons formula, so that, that's the 37% formaldehyde with the, the 10 to 15% yep. methanol solution. You run that, you dose that every 24 hours yep. for 10 days, no water changes. No water changes. Yeah, we don't do any water changes. No water changes. So we don't know. do a lot of um, we don't do a lot of big water changes or complete teardowns because our system is 205 gallons. So it's not like a 20 gallon tank where you can just dump it in the sink and <laughs> go grab a 20 more gallons, right? So our system usually go. My copper system usually goes for roughly um, I don't know two, three months, something like that. Usually two months before I tear the whole thing down. I'm doing it right now, actually, if y'all yeah, want to. Yeah, I saw it today on the forum. Yeah. And so if you're treating, so just everybody knows, if you're treating with copper and formalin at the same time, you're treating ick, prophylactically, ick, velvet, brook, brooklynella, and urinema. So you're basically, you're taking and, care of the big four. But we do, we do our parazia in there too. Right for worms, yeah. For, yeah, for so we hit our we hit them for flukes too. So they get hit. Like I've always been honest and open about how my approach is, and I'm very much on the side of once your fish is in decent enough shape, hit them, get it done, and get it over with. Right. Hit them hard, hit them all, and just be done. Right, right. now. A thousand other people are going to be screaming out their, you know, they're going to be screaming at, at their screens right now, going, "What are you insane?" But that's <laughs> different styles, right? As a business, I can't run a fish through two months. I'm already holding every single fish minimum an entire month, right? Already, so I can't do, you know, take care of my ick. And take care of my velvet and take care of my brooks and your anema and then take care of my flukes later on in a perfect world would i absolutely because your prosy works better anyways in a clean tank right right and like observation so it, it's better all around so for everybody at home do that but for me as a business that's just it's not possible it's not possible right. so they get they also get their prosy as well so I just wanted to throw that out there just in case anybody's ordering from us. We actually hit them really hard with Prazi. We hit them on day, um, we hit them four times. We hit them uh, days one, five, seven, and nine. Now, not on those, not on days one, seven, but in that rhythm, days one, you know, five, seven, and nine. So they get four shots of Prazi within that 14 day frame are i had you, um, are you treating at two or 2.5 milligrams a liter uh i just i treat at 9.5 per gallon so i That's don't know 2.5 so basically you're using the prosy pro dosage so basically people I'm, and i'm using pure prosy right right with the smo so okay yeah. So that's another thing. If people, you know, if they'll buy their own Prozzi Quantal and use DMSO to, to dissolve it, then you don't. Because the thing is, what people are probably like not understanding is because you're using pure Prozzi powder with DMSO, DMSO, you're not seeing the bacterial blooms like people that use Prozzi Pro sometimes experience. Yeah. And, you know, the, the wild part about that is, is I um, I do. I mean, I do still see the blooms like with if you're using Prozzi that's just one of those things where you're just you're playing the lottery every time you're just gonna you're gonna get one sooner or later but they're relatively easy to deal with if you're willing to deal with them um we personally have 
Um, for our 205 gallon quarantine system, we have a skimmer that's rated for uh, 500 gallons. So yeah. we really over skim when we can skim. Uh, we just can't do it at all times because of Prazi, we have to let that sit and bake for 24 hours before I fire that bad boy back up. Right. You know, so um, we run that, we run that, um, you know, to, to really try to eliminate that. Anybody at home though can grab one of those diatome filters and you can clear those things, those, uh, fil- those um, bacteria blooms up. And right. Five. And they sell those little marine land yeah, they're slick. filters that work great. They're and slick. Like, yeah. They're, cool they're slick for a million reasons too. Not even just for those, but just if you want to run carbon, um, they run a lot of water through a lot of carbon really, really quick. You can clean up water really fast. So those things are slick. If you, if you have th- that in your budget and you're doing a lot of quarantining, that's a, that's a good one to have in the, the luxury box. Right. Yeah. Right. Otherwise you just, if you're doing it in a 10 gallon, you dump it, <laughs> you know what I mean? You, right. you yeah. dump it and you, you fill it back up and then you you killed all of your ammonia. You took it, you took care of a lot of things in just that one little process. I want to show people too, before, cause I, I want to talk about the tea tree oil thing next. Yeah. before we do that. And let's just keep talking. I want to show, so people that take um, and there's information on the forum on how to take a skin scrape uh, to, you know, if you see a red sore on a fish and you want to check for your anema. But people are probably curious, what does your anema look like under a microscope when I take a skin scrape? So this yeah. video, uh, this yeah. is compliments of Aqua Veterinarian. Um, that's Dr. Charlie Gregory. And here people are now seeing on the screen, they're seeing uh, your anema under a microscope. And I know you've seen this a lot. We were talking yeah, about they, this earlier, the little <laughs> crazy little bumper car things, you know. Oh, yeah, that's that's the one thing. Every time I scrape, I just kind of cross my fingers and I hope I don't see, you know, this. those little, those little <laughs> buggers. Yeah, those are the. It's tough, and the hard part is, is they're really hard to miss. I mean, because usually you don't only see one by itself usually you're going to see them in large like large groups like once he zoomed into that 10 by 10 mag yeah that's what i when i see them it's like that it's it's always in large groups especially if you have a red sore you're gonna come up with a pile of those things so they are hard to miss now can you come across just one or two yeah but here's the kicker with urinema. There's so many different kinds of urinema that some of those urinemas that we're seeing under the scope are actually just cleaning the tank. Like that's their job. So not all urinema is bad urinema. So even when we see it and they're just pulled off of the very bottom, it's, it's really hard to tell that that's what you're looking at. But if you take it off of a fish and you see that, you're only dealing with yeah. that or Brooks. And there's really no other thing that looks like that. Right. And Brook moves. Brook looks very similar, but Brook moves slower. And yeah, it's, kind of like a, it's just like going nuts. It's like bumper cars. Yeah. And they're wild. They're like, I mean, they are fast. They're fast. I mean, and they don't stop. They It's go, 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 go with those things. So the ones that are dying off that you can get a scope on they you can um you can identify them they're they almost when they're laying flat they almost look like a a pringle they're they're kind of a weird kind of a longer shape and then they have a a darker center and you're going to see kind of a a ciliates along one edge so you're going to see you're going to see all the telltale signs of the ones that aren't moving. And those are the big mamas. Yeah, they're going to be huge, the ones that aren't moving. And then you're going to see just a ton of tiny little guys that are just zooming around. So, yes. Yeah. yeah it's this video it, again, just for anybody that missed it. Yeah. If you see a ton of movement like this off of a scrape of a fish, you're in, we're in trouble. I mean, we're not in trouble in regards to like, okay, that fish is dead 
but we're in trouble in regards to now we need to take action. There's no, right. there's no more denying that this is a bacteria infection. And unfortunately in a DT, urinema has no fallow period. So it's yeah, like, that's what you can, you can easily uh, get rid of out of your DT. Right. And so with that, I mean, I'm hoping and praying that, uh, some of these crazy kids, once I release this tea tree oil stuff that somebody's going to get wild and somebody's going to, we're going to, we're going to get this thing figured out y'all. We are. Yes. We're going to get this figured out. But so, right now, the only thing we can do in a tank is blast it with formalin. Right. I think. Unless you I want to bleach think, the tank. Well, and I, I yeah, yeah. And tear, the tear down, gross. I think though. Jessica's having some really good success over there. Yes, with the peroxide with, dosing. Yes. Yeah, and with uh, uranema. I think that's one of the diseases that they're actually really moving forward with. I think they're struggling with it, but I think they've done pretty well with some uranema over there. And what I'll now, do... If I write on that, you, I'd, I'm, you'll have to read through like yeah. 4,000 pages. I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know. That's not my lane. I don't go in that lane. But uh, I believe there might be some success there. And what I'll do, I'll link all this once you know at, at uh, once the video is done in the comment section. I'll, I'm going to link to your article on the forum and also to Jessica's intake yeah. hydrogen peroxide dosing, yeah. which some people, yes, actually have done aquabiomics testing, and they've actually they have actually been able to eliminate. Yeah. It doesn't work every time, but they have been able to eliminate uranema in a DT with the peroxide dosing. Yeah, so, so I mean, maybe a little bit of tweaking because I know Jessica's tweaking it towards ick but even those yeah. little tweaks i think is pumping more peroxide into those tanks which in turn maybe is going to be enough to you know help us out on this other side of things on uh, you know of your anema exactly so I don't know. let's talk about the tea tree oil so some people are probably watching this and they're like look i don't want to mess around with formalin and then we know that if a fish is showing red sores your anema red sores formalin is not going to save it but you've developed um a protocol that that we're not going to say it's 100 percent. it's showing some promise we yeah. need people to to help us test it out yeah. and it's using uh tea tree oil that is actually just found in milafix which is an herbal remedy that's found in a lot of fish stores so can you explain that to us all of this sounds works? so dumb doesn't it like <laughs> when we when we throw it out there like that that just sounds so silly and i realize that right like i'm the first one in line to go that is so dumb that's <laughs> not gonna work but but it has worked is it has right. yeah that's the yeah, problem it has worked it really has worked and so okay so the backstory of this whole thing god we've been running this like we've been running around trying to get this study i think we were trying to get it for what two years yeah it three years two and a half years something like that yeah. And we still don't have rayons on it. We It still doesn't exist. It just doesn't exist. Even though I think there's like 50 something references back to this study, it just simply doesn't exist. We just have the abstract. And even that seems like it's not the right abstract. Like even that seems like it's, it doesn't have the, it, it, something's not right there. So what happened was is um we kind of went on this rat race of we heard this about this magical juice <laughs> you know like and we we're like this this just doesn't doesn't sound right but at the time we were i mean i was willing to try anything because your anema unfortunately has seasons and i was in the middle of a really nasty your anema season and so real quick, when, when is your anema season that people might want to know that that are buying fish when uh, are you more likely to get your anema yeah i want to say it is their summer time so that's our winter okay so it's um i want to say september okay um through like november ish 
somewhere. Okay. There. So, so that's, that's, you are more likely to buy a fish that has your anemia. Would be yeah, yeah. And is that is that a thing? Probably not. But it seems like it it comes and it goes, and it comes and it goes, and it comes and goes. And it seems like now that I'm in third or fourth season of doing this, I've noticed that I call it your anemia season because okay, all the fish come in just, and it doesn't matter if they come directly imported or if they come through my wholesalers or no matter how they come, they just seem to come dirty. And it's like, hmm. And so I was losing 60%, you know, and right. it's like, well, nobody's going to be able to feed families losing 60% of their right. livestock. I'm, I'm sorry, no farmer can lose 60% of their livestock and just be okay. It, it, it's still a business, right? As much as I love y'all, it's still a business at the end of the day where I have to feed my family. Right. So I, w I was like, there has to be a fix to this. So we went, uh, sure. <laughs> yeah, we went, we went crazy. And we, so that was the thing that popped up tea tree oil. And so Chris over at, uh, up in Canada, um, ethic, oh, aquatics, um, ethic aquatics, right? Yes. Yeah, ethic. Yep. Yeah. Chris was like, Hey, you guys, I am just, gonna start on this tea tree oil and see what happens <laughs> me and joe um joe posh which is um uh premier aquatics right yes uh, here in minnesota uh, we all kind of just went okay chris you do you buddy you know what i mean and uh he came back like a couple months later and he said you know like there's something different about these fish well okay sure so I said, all right, let's give it a shot. So me and Joe went out and we went, bought ourselves some tea tree oil and we, the first batch in, came in. Um, I lost a, a first bath, like first set of fish I put through uh, before we knew what the heck we were doing. I instantly lost a, a, a Nigeria trigger fish like that. Just sank to the bottom dead. I was like, I'm out, I'm out. Like this is right. What in the world did we just do? It's not gonna work. Yeah, yeah this isn't gonna work at all. Like this, if they aren't living, this isn't gonna work. So uh, that was my one and only death with tea tree oil. It was in the very first batch, and what it came down to is it wasn't that our dosage was wrong. It wasn't that our little um, information that we got through the grapevine was wrong. It was our um mixing of the uh, to actually like make it go into the water so to to dilute it to the like the dsmo of the powders the uh, you know to the solvent right um was wrong and it gummed up his gills suffocated them dead just like that and all the other fish were only making it three four minutes and they were had to be pulled and that was it so that was my first experience and i said i don't know but Joe armied through it. He's like, I am not having those experiences here. Like all these fish are coming out clean. They, they're coming out great. He was having incredible success with citrus gobies, which were really, he was really struggling with those. We were all struggling with those. And all of a sudden the, the tea tree oil seemed to like do the trick. And then we were like, okay, well, he's going to, he's going to keep going. And he kept going. And I was like, all right, I'm jumping back in this. Something is happening. So I fixed my problems. I fixed the solution. I fixed the the dilution. I fixed um, where I needed to be for my PPM. And I started um, going at this thing again. And now I'm starting to document all the fish that are coming through. And the success that we had has been pretty incredible. It's been hard to deny the fact that that's the one thing that has changed, but yet all of these, all of a sudden, copper bands, angels, antheus, damsels are now making it through quarantine clean. And it's like, wow. So how does it work? I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know the science behind how the actual tea tree oil connects to the uranema, kills it off. I, I don't know, and I'll be the first one to admit that. But have I noticed an extremely um, 
positive uptick in my quarantine fish and them coming out clean a thousand times over yes so there's something there we don't know yet what it is um and that's kind of why i was real hesitant to put it out there right well there's all kind of disclaimers with it um you know that hey this is still this is highly experimental we don't you know we don't understand the exact science behind it we're, we're, we're trying to figure it out so so you're using so from a practical point of view people are like you know probably googling tea tree oil right now <laughs> but they can use melafix maybe explain yeah melafix is what we're using because we'll do this with melafix yeah so and the reason that we're using the melafix the one that we're using is the one percent style so it's the standard melafix it's not the marine melafix not right. the pond melafix it's the standard one and everybody asks us why right and it's because that's the only one that is truly standardized everything else on the data sheets say it can be anywhere from one to five percent well this treatment is so precise that we can't have that variation okay we have to know that every bottle is one percent so that's why we use the standard Melifex. Okay. And how do you use it? What's the dosage? Um, well, the dosage is 0.76 milliliters per gallon. So it's uh, 20 ppm. 20 ppm. And how long? And I know you say you have to heavily, heavily aerate. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So the crazy part about tea tree oil is actually it's a, it, it's a sedative. So it actually will put your fish to sleep. So there. to counteract that, the best way to do it is just to pump that sucker full of as much oxygen as you can. Okay. They're still going to get super lazy. You're still going to even be able to scoop them out with your hand if you wanted to. They're honestly that kind of groggy. Okay. But no harm is that we're aware of okay. is being done there. They're just falling. They're literally falling asleep. Um, it's they found uh, the reason that they found this is because they were studying sedatives against um ciliates and okay. so that's why tea tree oil was on the list to be tested okay and, yeah so that's and tea tree oil the only reason we really reached into tea tree oil instead of you they had um thyme oil they had garlic oil they had all these other oils but nothing that was standardized in our industry that we could be like, hey, like let's use that. Otherwise, we would be like, go to your nearest GMC, buy the clove oil that you see on the, you know what I mean? Like, right. That's a lot of variance from every brand and everything. So we we went with the tea tree oil because it's it's available to us. Right. And it's just like I said, standard. So it's the standard meal of fix, not the marine, the regular standard meal of fix. And you do what was the dosage again? And what's the duration? It's 0.76 milliliters per gallon. So 20 okay. ppm. 20 ppm. And how yep. long do you leave? So the bath? we call it a successful bath, bath if you kept them in there for more than 10 minutes. If they've hit the 10 minute mark or above, in an ideal world and in that study, um, they were keeping those fish in for 30 minutes. Okay. And they said they saw no ill effects. But you want to do a minimum of 10. Yeah. Okay. Now, it depends, I guess, on what you call ill effects, right? The only ill effects I found is them falling asleep. Okay. So um, people freak out that first time they do this bath because they will they're going to fall asleep. They're going to, they're going to kind of slowly doze off and they're going to pretty much look like they're dying. But right. again, they're not. So it's okay if we pull the plug anytime after 10 minutes in the study, they said seven minutes in, you know, a perfect world in a, in a flask, um, the very 100% of your Nemo was killed off in seven minutes. So okay. we give three minutes of buffer, but we would really like to hit 15 minutes in a perfect world. 
Now, is there anything you do to help revive them once post? No, they hit that clean water and they're they just wake up. Yeah, they're up, they're yeah. up and they're moving. Honestly, okay. if you see them struggling a little bit, you can do the old put them in front of a power head method. Um, what I would strongly suggest, though, is an acclimation box because they're going to be a little, little woozy, right? And those exactly. new, new fish going into a new tank already is already a lot of aggression to that new fish so in this case especially if you're kind of doing that last bath and then they're going over into a new tank or aggressive tank mates or anything like that or the display tank um because a lot of people or not a lot but i'm actually using it be my last bath before the display tanks and into the clean tanks okay. i use an acclimation box into every single one of those because otherwise those fish will just get crushed because they're, they're so sleepy trying to get their bearings plus a new environment plus fish. It gets, it's a little overwhelming for them. But, for, but fish that have, okay, so fish that have active uranema red sores like a chromis or an anthias or whatever, and they've got the red yeah. sores, you recommend doing three baths. Yep. And then after each bath, putting the fish in a quarantine tank with either what, like nitrofurazone, like some yeah. antibiotic dose, their methylene blue or exactly. NFP would probably be ideal, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. So it just, I mean, we just, if we're in a perfect world and we're able to pull those guys out of the tanks and all that good stuff, and um, we're just doing quarantine and nothing is, you know, out of, out of hand. Um, yeah, just uh, one bath every other day is all we got to do um three three of them seems to be the magic number 15 minutes and you're done it, that's it as far yeah it, it's super simple now there, has, as there as, have actually been cases of reversing uranema red sores yeah, there's with a, this bath and that has never been done before i want to stress that yeah it's wild and it's the cool part about it is even if we're wrong we're right with this in regards to if it's um if it is a bacterial infection that tea tree oil comes in and actually wipes out uh bacterial infection or bacterial as or bacteria right. as well so i mean it, it's a it's a win-win honestly like if you're kind of grasping at straws and you don't know what else to do why not right and it, it kind of goes back to, remember, you remember this on the forum. We used to tell people, people would show us uh, pictures of fish with uranema. We're like, euthanize it. Yeah, yeah, it's done. It's done. Euthanize it. You know, you don't want it, you want it to, you don't want it to infect your other fish. Right. So now actually there is a, a, something that could help. It's not guaranteed to, but it gives the fish a fighting chance. You don't have yeah. to just automatically euthanize the fish. You've actually got an option here that yeah. might save your fish. I think, um, there might be some people in, yeah, right there. Uh, Lisa, we helped get uh, fish back to 100% that was confirmed uranema. Um, I think uh, Mr. Igloo had a angel that was, that swallowtail that was really bad. I think you had a video of it up earlier. Yeah, I'll actually, yeah, I'll, I'll put that back up while here, we're talking. This here. Too. Sorry yeah. guys, I didn't realize that it was getting dark. Uh -huh. um, yeah, so that uh, that swallowtail was probably the furthest along that we've seen that has that fish is alive and well. He's got scars, but this right here, just for anybody wondering, this fish you're looking at right here, we the tea tree oil bath right here reversed uranium on this particular fish. Yeah, that was that was a wild one. Like that's what I see a lot of. Unfortunately, I don't see a lot of the chromy red that you see there because i don't deal with a lot of the chromis yet um i'm just getting into the damsels and pushing tea tree oil on the damsels to really see if this thing is working you know like that's a pretty good test if we're we're now i don't know if you've noticed on fish hotel but we're pushing a lot more anthias out the door now and it's because yes. tea tree oil uh, that's it's strict i mean i give all credit to tea tree oil. When I'm doing a very um, susceptible fish, they do get the full treatment. They get the full three baths. I will, I pull them out of the quarantine system and they get 
bath in large vats and then they go back in. So as we were talking about that is in my case, because I can't put them into a fresh, clean quarantine after their bath, we have to treat whatever quarantine they're going back into um, for urinema as well. If, right. if you aren't going to put them into um, like a, a dirty tank, into just a fresh, clean tank, I honestly don't even think you have to treat anything more at this point. You don't have to, you know, do CP. You don't have to do any of those things besides your antibiotics. Can concentrate on your antibiotics in your tanks and do your urinema treatments in the baths. Right. And exactly. get rid of that water. If you can, just get rid of that water. If if you can't, which I understand some people can't for whatever reasons, like such as myself, uh, you know, keep on treating that whole cycle for with 10 days of formalin or at the very least metro or chloroquine boss, something right. that's going to at least keep everything at check while we are killing off the urine. And I just want to point out for anybody watching this, it's like, you know, trying to keep track of everything we're saying. You wrote an article on the forum. Yeah, yeah. Uh, don't try to keep track of it. Yeah, us versus your yeah. name. I'm, I'm going to post me a message. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to post a link to that in the comment section of this video. So anybody that wants to learn more, you know, you just click on the link and everything that we're talking about is all laid out, all written out step by step, exactly what you have to do. Yeah. So if you want to yeah. use form. So just to kind of recap here, basically anyone who wants to prophylactically treat for urinema, like you don't even want to deal with it, you basically would dose formalin 0.9 uh, milliliters per 10 gallons for the first, every 24 hours for the first 10 days, best to, to do that alongside copper. Correct. But then if you are actually dealing with uh, a fish that actually has urinema red sores, like an antheus, then that's where you would use the Milafix baths that we just talked yeah. about. And then you would yeah, afterwards yeah. put the fish in like a QT with antibiotics to take care of the secondary infections. Yeah. When you have to pull out the big guns, right? Like, that's when you pull out the tea tree oil. Or if you're just doing that that wash. Um, if you're doing kind of the, you know, the just in case, uh, I do that for, like I said, every fish. They get it on the way in and they get it on the way out. And that's 14 days apart, right? So I'm not doing that for thinking like that's going to be a treatment cycle. I'm doing that more as a wash, right? Because I right. feel like, I don't want that last little bit of urinema that might be on that fish to go into the clean systems. Right. Instead of using formalin, like a lot of folks would do, I've already blasted these fish with a gazillion things. The last thing they need is another chemical to be thrown on them. So that's what I love about the tea tree oil is, I don't want to say it's natural, but it's, it's better than I, using formalin. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly correct. It's better than formalin. I the minute that I figure this out and I figure out an in tank solution to this, formalin's gone. It's out my shop too. I have a baby girl that I don't want the, it around either. Right. Right. Like I would love to be around for my baby for a long, long time. So I don't like using this stuff either. But the problem is, is it's the only thing that has worked. Right, right. And I have a, I take my job <clears throat> very seriously with everybody that their expectations out of me is perfection. As a quarantine vendor, I don't have the luxury of going, ah, oh, shoot. I'm I don't. Up. Right, yeah. yeah I don't. Right every single Because fish. that's going to cost somebody right three thousand dollars yeah right and it's gonna be the last fish that they were gonna add into their tank and they were done it's because that's just the way it works so there is no room for oopsie daisies around for me right mm -hmm. otherwise so i that, just wouldn't have a job that explains so, why you know you have to be so aggressive with yes. use of chemicals and medications Correct. where like you were saying previously people that are that are just quarantining for their own for their own personal use 
they can be like, you know, they don't have to be as aggressive. They can, you know, like for example, right. you can still use the copper formalin combination while the fish are in quarantine. Yes. Once the fish are in observation, maybe then you want to deworm with prosy. Hundred percent. You know, I would, so in a perfect world, do that. Do well, that. Take your time. There's no rush to put these fish into your display tank because you'd be shocked at the stuff that you see two weeks after quarantine. Right. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, I know we all want like all the stupid tanks off of our counters, and we want them, you know, in the display tank because that's why we bought them, but it's also the time when we are like, okay, we want that to happen. We screw up and we slip it up by a week and we go, you know what? We're just going to throw them in there. And that's the time, the one time that you got ick, you know? So it just, it's Murphy's law. Right. So you can yeah. Take every precaution that you can to protect your display tank because you only really want one of those in your house. You know what I mean? Right. You don't want 42 tanks set up all over when that bastard goes down. Exactly. Like, well, let, let, let's take some questions because uh, we're at, we've been about an hour now. So let's yeah, just, yeah. I'm looking over the live chat, just trying to, and I'm sorry, I'm apologize if I miss anyone's question. If you could repost the question, I'm, I'm looking at the live chat. So someone asked here, how long does it take to fester if you were observing fish for a couple of months? Would it show itself? Referring to your anema, how would you answer that? Yeah, I, it's a tough one it, because I would say it all depends on the, the circumstance. If it's in a bare bottom tank all by itself, it's going to show its head and it's going to show right. its head relatively quick. Um, I would say within two weeks. Okay. Now, if it's in a display tank, it might never show its head. It might slowly, like we kind of talked at the very beginning, pick off fish one at a time mystery like what is going on in there so it might never really show its head so it's it that's a that's the problem with your anema yeah it's difficult to it's to so hard to pin down yeah. you're probably the best option for people to do if they're curious is to get an aquabiomics test and that will tell them what because there's actually two different species of your anema yeah. and it will yeah. tell you which uranema you have and and everything and that's, that's probably the best too, way to know right? because that takes a couple months right now they don't have that nailed down so you know I, I would say i think there was a gentleman on the forum today that i was helping that is a perfect candidate for that where he's had his tank up for eight months he's had six or eight fish he's lost three of them kind of randomly where you can't really put anything on it, can't really see anything. You know, I can't really tell them to scrape anything because what are you going to scrape, you know? So that's the perfect situation of, okay, well, we're going to either be fighting a ghost, which is almost always your anema, honestly. Right. right. I hate to say that, but anytime we're fighting these silly ghosts, it almost always come back at a super low level. Yep. Yeah, so, it's, it's in a lot of tanks. People don't even realize it. Yeah, I did um, in my write-up when I looked at that time, 12%, I want to say, of tanks were coming back positive for your EMA. Right. And so, I mean, it's it's out there, right? It's not like it's in every tank. You, can, you guys can prevent this. Like, there is a way to stop this. It's just now we have a little bit of, TTO, which is the tea tree oil is a wonderful option. I, I believe, I believe, but if worst case scenario, I mean, you do your formalin bath before your display tank. Right. And that's you, something people need to know. You can do a formalin bath and you can use formalin in the quarantine tank. There's two different, um, right. there's, there's two different dosages. I'll, I'll include a link to that, but you can do um, a 45 minute formalin bath at a much higher dosage. I think it's like 250 parts per million. And then when you actually treat in the quarantine tank, it's at 25 parts per million. So you can use it either way. Yeah, that's the nice part. It's the nice and the negative part about your anema is your anema doesn't have anywhere to hide because it doesn't ever, you know, insist on, or it never actually like, you know, can, it can go anywhere. It's always out to the open for us to kill. It's just once it buries into the fish, 
right. that's a whole different ballgame. Yep, because once it gets under their their dermis, then it, yeah, it yeah, embeds and it's hard to get rid of. Yeah, because so, we can't, we don't have anything that's going to break the blood brain barrier. Right. And in some cases, fish with uranemia, you just have to euthanize them because, yeah, I mean, yeah. there's just nothing that's you just can always do. Yeah. So Rogue Aquariums is asking 37% uh, formalin. So, yes, so what yeah. you would do, formalin, proper formalin is a, a, a mixture of 37% formaldehyde and about 10 to 15% methanol. I'll include yeah. the link. Uh, you can buy it right on Amazon. Um, formalin only has a six-month shelf life, so I tell people don't stock up on it. No. Um, you know, just buy what you need and everything. Yep. Um, yeah, so and it's expensive, you guys. Like, yes, it's not cheap. And the worst part is, you know, it's all got to come ground and all that good stuff too. So, yeah, you don't, and you don't want it laying around your house, y'all. Like, get it, take care of what you got to take care of, and get get rid of it. Now, you can't just dump it down the sink, but you know, tuck that away in a safe place that nobody can get to. And right. like your this, kids. that's no joke. Like. It's it's one of those things that you'd put next to your rat poison, right? Like yes, definitely. Uh, someone says is formalin a must. Big Head Reef asks, is formalin a must? Is it being used strictly to treat your anemia? So we basically will say that a formalin bath. Well, so there's an interesting thing. A formalin bath can be used um, as actually temporary relief for velvet brook uranema uh, yes. flukes. I uh, don't think formalin is a must and that's what we're trying to get away from right like yeah. as much as we're preaching and you're hearing formalin 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 i'm on the other side of the fence as well screaming formalin sucks like we don't i nobody wants to deal with it so if there's a way of not using it yes if if you want to try hydrogen peroxide first in the tank do that worst case scenario is you're just going to prolong it and We'll fix it later. Like, you know what I mean? If you want, we now are trying this tea tree oil. So if they're out of the tank, give that a shot. If you don't want to use formalin before they go into the tank, do tea tree oil and just give them that quick bath and send them along their way. You know, so no, I don't think so. But I just want to make sure everybody's aware when we're talking about tea tree oil, we are specifically talking uranema. They we don't think it takes care of anything outside of uranema and probably bacteria bacteria you know, that's yeah, it. bacterial infection just that little box like i don't think it's going to do anything for your brooks your flukes your ick your velvet none of those things so if we're speaking to getting away from formalin just for uranema yeah heck yeah and especially if you're doing one-off fish and you have the opportunity to observe them for a month afterwards in a bare bottom tank or even with a little bit of sand or whatever where you can kind of fester that up and really put that to, to your quarantine to a test there's nothing you could do more than keep a fish in a 10 gallon tank by its you know even with another fish whatever and let it sit for a month all by itself and see what happens because if you have something a month will give you plenty of time to find that. And if there's nowhere for it to hide and nowhere for it to go, it's going to attach to that fish at some point. Right. Exactly. If it can go down in the sand and all that good stuff and hide and, you know, it can prolong for a long time. So Freddie asks, uh, and this is kind of going back to you, you were talking about that there's a uranema season, which was like, I think we <sighs> said was from September to November. Is yeah. there a specific fish that is harvested around those months? So no, it's just all the big scaled fish. It's all the same right. fish that we deal with. It's all of them. And the problem is, is um, it all starts at the very beginning, right? Like where uh, all the exporters are putting all these fish in the same water. Like, unfortunately, a lot of places that we're ordering from. You know, we think in America that everybody should live like Americans live. And when we're talking about these poor countries that are shipping over these fish, they it's in large vats, you know, so that disease is not going to go away. That is just going to stay right there and every fish is going to pass through it. Yeah. So it starts there and then it unfortunately doesn't get better once it gets here. Right. 
You know what I mean? Like yeah. it just is more of the same. They land into you know uh, more big systems that are sharing more diseases with. And the thing is, is the diseases that the fishes have never even seen before. Yeah. Because they're coming from different locations. Right. And they're coming. So I mean, these poor fish, you know. Fish from the Caribbean are being, when they go through the wholesale facilities, are being introduced to strains of ick and velvet uranema that, that come from the Indo-Pacific that they've that never, they would never seen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I mean, it's yeah. Yeah, they're against. The, they're they're up against the eight ball, huh? So it really, it doesn't. It's eight ball. It's one of those things where, is it a season for a particular place? I don't know. I I just know it seems like it upticks then and it downticks right at the kind of towards the you know the end of the winter right so i i don't know i don't know i don't have any answers it's just a a trend i've seen i guess so you've noticed yeah uh rogue aquariums asks uh when you are done quarantining do you recommend cleaning the tank out with ro vinegar or wiping it down with um what's basically um rubbing alcohol before using it again so how would you think it's about like sterilizing a, a tank? Yeah, I'll let you take that because I mean over here we again we only work with very large systems. Um, we do do one off twenty gallon systems for um, if home if you go on the forum and look through our need fish section, you'll find a powder blue that had an unfortunate run in with a grouper, and. Uh, so he he has his own 20 gallon. So I mean, we'll set up our own 20s, but it's very rare. Uh, uh, for us personally, we rely on uh, our tanks drying out a lot. So we we dump everything out, get everything you know, all that gets bleached. Like all the equipment, all the heaters, all the power heads, all that goes into a bleach formula. You know, that's that's all taken care of there. The tank itself. Um, we just do a, a wash down and then we do um, the rubbing alcohol. Right. We do which, is, quick... which is great for removing uh, the biofilm. Yep. Yeah. Nine, we use the 91% too. So we use the high, the higher, the better, really. Okay. Because we use that also to wash our hands when we have to go in between on graduation day and stuff like that. So okay. we use a lot of that. And then once that's done, we just let them, we throw them off to the side and we actually have a section that is for drying tanks that nobody can touch. And then once um, we kind of run out of tanks, because we cycle through them, we go into that pile and we actually rewash them again. We run them through another set of tap water. We hit them again with uh, with the alcohol and then we call them good. So basically so, it's kind of like the vinegar does a pretty good job at sanitizing, but you still want to dry tank and equipment that's the to to us that's the that's the that's the key right there is it's the drying because that the drying. Drying sterilizes waterborne pathogens but then you would use maybe the rubbing alcohol to get any like rough spots especially if you see like any possible biofilm yeah. uh, on the glass or something and it cleans up the tanks really nice and right. they're really squeaky clean like you know when you have a clean tank and you're cleaning it with alcohol that sucker right. is eat or eat or eat you know so <laughs> You know you're good to go so it, it's it's one of those self-checking tests where okay is this thing clean enough is it squeaking all right then we're good to go and then like i said we we let it dry out for and for us it takes us a good two weeks i bet to cycle through our tanks so i mean it's drying for two weeks long you know and then it, it makes its way back back into circulation yeah um, so Stephanie asks, um, some of the signs, symptoms, which seem to be common with uranema, lethargic appetite, et cetera. So I think she's asking what behavioral symptoms yeah. do you, do you notice when you, a fish has uranema? You know, typically they're pretty, when we're talking about like in the tank and all that good stuff, um, everything seems to go pretty regular they're usually eating fine everything is good until they kind of don't show up for breakfast one day and they're hiding a little bit longer in the sand or their their days start getting a little bit shorter 
if that makes sense. They're they're hiding a little bit more at night. They're hiding a little bit more in the afternoon. They're hiding a little bit more in the morning. They're not hitting every single meal. You know, just when you look at your tank and you're, you. you're feeding them, you just feel you'll you just feel like something's off. You can't quite put your finger on it, but something just feels off. That's the best way I can describe it. Until you start seeing around the edging of the scales or the scale starting to lift a little bit okay you start seeing them um, um dropsy and freshwater fish is what you'd start seeing saltwater fish it's just uh you'll start seeing those scales lifting that's usually your very yeah. first indicator is when you, you see start seeing, scales on them yeah yep, when you start seeing two or three scales lift we better get on something. Right. That'd be a good time to take a, a skin scrape and yep. look, see what's going on under a microscope. Yep. Yeah. And if you do that skin scrape and those scales just kind of slide right off. Okay. It's another real good indicator that something ain't right because something's underneath there and you can, I mean, you'll, you'll literally slide it along them and you'll bring four or five scales with you and you didn't press that hard right so yeah you know you, if you stuff, can't physically yeah. get them out of the tank and give them a scrape and that doesn't mean you killed them honestly like those scales were coming off no matter what it just could right. those scales were coming off in two days so it just matter that okay let's we need to address this and right. dump them in some tto don't do formalin when they're like that, though, because I think we both agree that the it fish are burn. not, yeah, are not. Well, just, if the that, fish has yeah, redness, right. formalin is just going to burn the hell out of burn them. Burn the hell out of them. Yeah. Yeah. And you're, then yeah, the stress right. levels go up. And then, you know, TTO, the nice part about that is the stress levels come down because yes. they're going to sleep, boy. They're, you know, so you scoop them out and they, there's no injury there when you scoop them out because they're so relaxed. I literally, when it's time to pull them out of the TTO bass, I go in there with my hands and gloves and scoop them out and put them into a tank. So they're that, it's, it's, they're that yeah, they're that usually that calm. So Stephanie, so Stephanie is a lady that I've been, we've, we've been talking on Facebook and she actually, uh, she's in Panama city beach, Florida, which is close to where I used to live. And she's, she's starting a, um, um, well, she's got a business, but she's kind of getting more into trying to quarantine oh, cool. and sell the fish. Um, but she, we were actually talking today and she reminded me of something, um, about hyposalinity. So what she's, what she was telling me when it, was, it actually, I never even thought about this. That when she gets fish in, you know, they're let's just say the SG, you know how wholesalers are, it could be like 17 or 18. Yeah, usually they come in, even now from exporters, for whatever reason, I'm getting them. And the, the last batch from uh, Bali came in at 1.019. Right. So that's full hypo. So what, what she was suggesting, and I actually found this interesting, was that she is not seeing any signs of uranema until she starts raising salinity on the fish. Almost like the 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 hypo or we'll just say lower salinity <laughs> is is suppressing symptoms of of uranema, and then what she was saying is that then you know the parasites become more active as you raise the salinity. So her thought was it might be better to actually treat uh, uranema while the fish is in in lower salinity and the parasites are less active to help you kind of you know get you know ahead Maybe of it. some time. Does that make sense? I mean. In theory, it does, right? Yeah. I mean, I have, I have exactly zero hours of hyposalinity experience. Okay. So, honestly, I I don't know. But in theory, if they aren't multiplying as quickly, just like uh, anything else, right? It would give you time to get out of it and and kill it off before it could get rolling. So, right. In, theory that would make sense now have i ever done it in practice i i don't know i've, okay. I've never done even hypo really you know like i said they come in at one 1 1.019 so i got to bring them up seven points but that's as low as i go um with all of everything that i blast them with there's not much that makes it out the other side besides a clean fish 
So, so maybe I, something to experiment with. I mean, I thought it was an interesting idea she had. And, you know, and it seems like how the parasites become more active once you raise salinity. So maybe I best to treat love the fish. Know. Yeah, maybe best like to treat the fish with tea tree oil or and or formalin while the fish are in a lower salinity. Yeah, I would I would invite her to the discussion and invite her to do as many if they're you know what I mean? Like unfortunately for me, I have to do things the way that I have to do them and I don't have a lot of space to do that type of stuff, the experimental stuff. When I do experimental stuff, it's a real burden because I can't have that with the things that I know work, right? I can't right. have them go through the same quarantine as everybody else, or I can't try something new with everybody else's fish and just hope that it worked. Or I, so it, it's really, really hard for me to do these experiments and to set up more space and more time and more energy to to try out all those new things so that's exactly why we put it out when we put it out because i wanted to hold this to my chest because i was only sprinkling it out there very very slowly with folks that i knew had your anima and uh trusted me and were willing to try out this new thing um and then when we were having great success with them that's when you're like, you know what, throw it out there, see what happens. And these are the exact things that I'm hoping happen. Maybe we find out that hypo and that is the key. Right. Or maybe it's not necessary. Like, you know, Reef Beef always says the juice, juice isn't worth the squeeze, right? Like maybe it's just not worth going down and coming all the way back up when it already works at the salinity that it's working at. Right. And that's why we're doing this. We're reaching out to the community because we need help and yeah, figuring this out. And we need help figuring this out and doing experimentation. It was like, here's another comment. Um, and I've done some experimentation of what about uh, Trickman 2 asked, what about peroxide? About using, yeah. I guess, peroxide to treat your anema. Um, and it, it, a and that would be on you. Like, you could yeah. answer that more than anybody. Well, and like a peroxide bath will provide temporary relief, but it doesn't seem to 100% eliminate it. And then kind of going back to Jessica's in-tank peroxide dosing, that has actually been documented to eliminate uh, two different species of uranema in a DT environment. Now, like yeah, I, said, I know Oscar's tank got cleaned up with yep. that, that whole thing. So, I mean, I it works. Yeah. So that's the beauty of this is, what how long ago did we start i mean how long ago did jessica start that that was probably a year and a half ago two years something it's been like probably that. about yeah at least two years i mean the the amount that we've done in the last two years against this disease feels like we're finally moving the boulder a little bit right finally it feels like we were stuck for a really long time and it just feels like we're finally kind of turning over a new leaf on this. So there are other options now instead of doing formalin and doing all these nasty things that we talked about for the last hour. Right. So, exactly. And maybe, you know, like that's another one that would fall into that category of just a natural way of fighting this, of dropping the salinity, right? That's no chemicals. That's no people in Canada, people in everywhere can drop salinity. And I mean, I'm actually sitting here thinking about my, my, you know, I'm thinking to myself, what if we drop salinity and lower temperature? So well, that I would imagine it would be the same thing. You're going to slow right. everything down. I mean, every, all the metabolisms are going to slow down, which in turn should buy greater, you more time. Maybe a, a greater greater protocol. protocol. Yeah. So speaking of which, so, I mean, we got a lot of questions uh, coming in here. SAF1 asks, could you create a bath using the oil in methylene blue? What do you think? Yeah, about so Joe, uh, Jay Posh on the forum, um, that's how he was doing all of his baths. I personally have never done it. So I, I can't say absolutely go do it, but it seems to be from other folks that have tried it, that's actually really helped a lot for keeping them awake, keeping them going through that 15, 10, 15 minutes. So I, 
I want to say yes. I really want to say yes. But again, that's going to be kind of the for uh, the problem of all these questions is I don't, I don't know. Right. I don't know. Do it's we more- use it? No. Have other folks that I know have successfully used this method used it? Yes. How about that for a muddy answer? Right. Hey, right <laughs> you know. So here's another one. I can actually answer this one. Big Head Reef asks, is there a written protocol for a tea tree oil on the forum? There yeah. is. Um, and I will include a link in the comment section. Actually, it's if you go on the forum right now, it's called, uh, uh, Jeff wrote it. It's called it's Us awesome. Versus Uranema. Yeah. And he outlines in there everything we've been talking about. I will include a link. I think to it's that. sticky too. Yeah, it's sticky. If you go into the fish diseases and treatments, it's actually one of the stickies that people can look up. So Vince Loves Fish asks, are you experimenting with in-tank dosing during copper with tea tree oil? Yeah, so that's kind of the next thing. You know, like I have started, but I haven't I haven't done enough to say anything. Okay. <laughs> you know? So as as underwhelming as that is, um that's the truth like i I think that's a strong possibility because the ppm that we have to hit is so low that i feel that i feel that we can get rid of that relatively quick with carbon okay i don't know i don't know but that's we're gonna we're gonna find out i don't know okay okay that's so it's a it's another experiment yeah so the (laughs) the the furthest i've taken that experiment is um i simply left a fish that was was not gonna make it no matter what we did um it was just in that category of just too far gone unfortunately and he lived out his last days um in that in that full strength um bath bath strength and he went four and a half days so to me that and that's with his uranema so i mean you know that's yeah that's that's it's good progress. yeah that's good it shows progress it's exactly. it's a start so i that's all that's all i got so uh, Pod Slammed asked, where can I get tea tree oil? So the tea tree oil that we've been talking about in, in this live stream is just Milifix. It's the yes, API thing, right? Yeah, API. It's not the marine, just the API standard Milifix is what you yeah, want. Just, you can buy it. I mean, online. Has a little, little freshwater angelfish on the front. Yep. It's a blue bottle. Um, yeah, it's just your standard Milifix that you'll find at any Petco, PetSmart, local restore they all carry it so lacry says um i did three h2 h2o2 baths and it didn't get, get rid of uranema for mine so yeah again h2o2 baths are probably only good for temporary relief of uranema not it's not probably going to completely eliminate it because that's that's sort of the one weakness to even hybrid tank transfer method is those two peroxide baths are not going to completely cleanse a fish of, of uranema yeah and the other one is with the uh, hybrid you got to hit your with the, your prazi too right because hdo2 doesn't do anything with your flukes yep yeah exactly exactly so i think i've got all the questions uh covered uh I'll, we can kind of see if there's anybody else comes oh. in with more questions but let, let's uh look let, let's make sure we plug your business here that's really important i mean uh so you own and operate uh, fish hotel yeah. and you sell quarantined conditioned fish and I yeah. think everybody watching this can figure out that you're the real deal you're not what I call a half-baked um, quarantine vendor I mean you do the real thing so you're buying legit quarantine fish from you so why don't you just tell us how do people that want to buy fish from you how do they get in touch with you your website yeah, yeah, yeah. give us all that so we're kind of a wild child honestly for we don't really do anything normal um i guess uh how do we start this again as you know you know we run fish hotel the best way of contacting me is 
by far on the forum um, okay. or through email. Um, I'm always on my computer every day at the office doing my thing at the shop. Um, so this is my full-time job. This is all I do now. So I, I really, this is it, you guys. Like, um, this is this is my one and only at this point. And so, I take this extremely seriously. Uh, this is, for me, it's a, it, kind of how uh, eat breakfast knows everything about fish. It's a pride thing. It's a, it's a want to do right for the hobby. Want to let you all get away from all these chemicals, all of this quarantine nonsense, not having 55 tanks all over the place, having your wives upset and your husband's upset and your partner is upset. I, I, it's just not worth it. Like we didn't get into this hobby for all of that, right? We got into it so we can have tanks and tinker under our tanks and play and do the fun stuff, right? So that's kind of where we jumped in. Um, Bobby was getting out of the hot, out of the business, and um, I was the sucker that fell for it. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, "Hey, I kind of feel like I I handed you the playbook, and you <laughs> kind of took the playbook, and you improved upon it. You know, yeah, you, I, you improved upon the playbook that I gave I you. Try. I really try. Like at the heart of it, that's all I can tell you guys. I would never." send out a fish. And in fact, I sent out a message today. Um, I would never send out a fish that I personally would not put in that tank right there. That just, that is the soul of my business. Right. Every right. single person that orders from me because I'm very small time. I'm not your TSMs. I'm not your, I'm nothing like that. I am some, I'm, I'm a guy that has 900 square feet and that's it. Um, so, uh, if you need customer service, you're going to get me. If you need questions answered, you're going to get me. If you need a quarantine guy, if you need the boss, if you need to talk to a man, what I'm saying is I'm accessible. Just reach out to me. If there's anything y'all need, if you need custom orders, we don't do a lot of that anymore. We used to do strictly custom orders um but it just got it we grew to the point where i i personally can't handle everybody's fish list it just it it's always changing it's always evolving something here something there and by the time i get the fish done clean ready to go i'm comfortable releasing them which is probably the longest period of time um usually they have their fish they've they've packed up and they're gone so we've gone away from all of that now, and we just, anything that we have available, we put it right on our website. It's at fishhotel.com, um, just one H, F-I-S-H-O-T-E-L.com. Um, all those fish are just available right now. Um, anything you see on the website, you buy, you pick your shipping date, and we ship them out. It, it's really right. simplified everything. Now. With all of that being said, I do custom orders. <laughs> um, we do it on the forum, right? We went back to old school orders. And if you go on the forum, I have a section in the quarantine fish section. You'll find Fish Hotel. And uh, in there, every, I don't know, probably three, four weeks now, I'm posting my entire fish lists that I have available to me and saying, here you go, guys, pick whatever fish you want that you see here. Right. I'll put it on the order sheet. If you want it when it's all done, it's yours. If you don't, that's cool too. The cool part about it is most likely if you're ordering it, most likely somebody else wants it too. So even if you don't want it anymore, I have, plenty of folks that will take it. So I don't want people to feel pressured when they order. It's all a really fun two day, I call it a mini event, because that's kind of what it is. And it just kind of lets you guys go crazy and lets you guys see the the underbelly of 
how everything works. I post, if you go on uh, the latest one, I think is called Need Fish. I mean, it's laid out for you. You'll see it from the very beginning to today on what has happened with those fish, pictures of fish. I mean, you can ask for your pictures of fish there. You can you can do whatever you want. So we have a very muddy system, um, but it works for us because we still get to do the personalized touch, which I, the whole reason I'm doing this. And, um, but we also are covering kind of your instant gratification purchase needs to more along your yellow washman gobies, your diamond gobies, your everyday bread and butter fish, if you will, or you'll find on the website and pretty much available for you. Okay. Thank so you. kind of a muddy answer, but again, uh, we don't do anything normal around fish hotel. So, um, if you have questions, I'm super accessible. Like, I, I'm on the forum like 23 hours a day. <laughs> so <laughs> honestly, jump on there, shoot me a PM, shoot me an email, ask a question. Even if I have it somewhere posted that I don't do it, if you send me email, the answer probably will change. And, and I want to encourage anyone that's watching this, look, you need, and you know, we have other quarantine vendors, but you need to buy from quarantine vendors like Jeff here because, you know, I kind of go into these rants sometimes. I feel like there are so many what I call bad actors in the aquarium industry and the ones like you that are, are the good quality vendors that are trying to make a difference. You're, you're, you're trying to make a difference. You're, you're trying to supply um, your clients and customers with clean, healthy fish. You're, you're, you're doing experimentation. I mean, I didn't know anything about, you know, using Milafix tea tree oil to treat your anema. Yeah, so you're, you're, you're right? doing things like that. You're on the forum constantly answering people's questions. So yeah, right. the way, I mean, the way to pay that forward is for people to support you, for people to buy fish from you and to support you because you're not just getting these, these uh, awesome fish from Fish Hotel. You're getting more like wisdom. You're getting help. You're getting guidance. You're getting newer treatments. And we're, we're I mean, we're trying to like we're trying to crack the code. We're trying to get to a point where yes. we either can. And we're trying to give the code away. Well, yeah, we're doing that. right. Yeah. Like, and that's the thing. I want to stress that too. Like, even if you don't purchase anything from me or us or whatever, I don't care. If you need help, please come to the forum. I am. I will walk you through every step of the quarantine. You don't have oh, to yeah. buy even my fish or quarantine fish, if you want to do it yourself, some people, they want to do it themselves. And I encourage that. Please do that. In fact, there's a section in our website uh, in the frequent asked questions where there's calculators and yes. schedules. Yes. And I truly only want other people's tanks to have success, right? Like, I am very proud to say this tank has never seen fish disease ever. Every fish that's gone in here has either. All right. I'll admit it. I don't have covers on there, which you can't see. They've jumped and I found dead bodies, dry bodies, or they have died their long lives in that tank. So there is a way to do this without having the constant stress of, I don't want to come home after dealing with fish disease all day long to come home to a tank full of dead fish, right? Like that's the worst of all of our, worst of all of our days. So you can do this. We, we can do this and you, you don't have to spend an extra amount of money. We can do this relatively cheap, relatively cheap. Um, and I'll help you no matter what, if it's through quarantine or if it's through buying our fish, I, I don't care. I'm here to help. Like that's, that's kind of what I do now. And I've been buddies with Bobby now for five years or whatever. So even though it says humble fish and friends, I take that website very personal and that's my little home there. So 
anytime y'all need anything, Bobby is also, you know, an open book and I'm the same way. That's kind of our philosophy when we started this thing and started bringing in medics and everything. We all wanted them to all have the same attitude of let's just get healthy, clean fish into tanks. That's right. it. No other crap, no other underlying, no other advertisements, no other, none of that. Let's just, let's just get clean fish into tanks. And we have, enjoy we, have, the we have on the forum, we have other fish disease experts. We have other fish disease medics and we all kind of, we kind of bounce ideas off each other. We help each other. And I like it because like I've noticed a lot of times there are things in a particular thread, people, someone's asking for help. There's things I don't even see that you see, or you're yeah. more kind of in tune with what's going on because you know, you're getting constantly getting fish in and out. So it, it's, it's awesome that we're able to kind of not only help one another, but offer different perspectives yes. as in trying to kind of narrow down what the problem might be when yeah. the fish disease question. hundred uh, percent. Like th how many times have you been like, uh you know that looks like da 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 and i'll come behind and go no nah, i don't know bobby i think that might be and then we get a couple more pictures and we're like you know what actually i think that's this and we both kind of come together on a conclusion right. and at right. least you have at least you have something to go off of we're not saying we're right right like none of us are going to be right 100 percent of the time we're looking at pictures on the internet we're not even looking at a tank or live fish Right, we're going off of what you're telling us, and these one or two pictures that we have. So, are we going to be right 100% of the time? Absolutely not. But with the team that we've had and the team that you've built, I mean, you you at least have a direction to go once you leave our forum. I feel right. So we have a couple more questions, and then we'll wrap this up because we're already. Yeah well over the uh, schedule um what a surprise uh, well yeah you know <laughs> that's when i get on the phone and it can turn out <laughs> four hour yeah know, that's just this is this short stuff. for us you guys sorry <laughs> um okay so uh freddie asks uh how can we help the research for tank tea tree oil with copper i have fish on copper right now how much should i try to add i don't know if that's something you want to touch yeah, i mean that's i mean that's like right off the top i guess what i would say is jump into the us versus your NEMA forum okay. put a little blurp in there and i mean it's only 8 44 y'all like i'll be on the forum for another three hours <laughs> so <laughs> yeah we'll we'll chat about it okay okay because yeah, so I, mean, we'll I, I don't know we don't know anything at this point all we know is we got it i know the numbers we have to hit and for the amount of time that we have to hit them that's about that's about all we know okay so that we'll leave that as a as a, a thread discussion. Yeah, uh, so that'd be a great thread discussion. Vince wants to know real lighthearted question here. What kind of reptile do you own in the tank next to you? So I guess yeah. he's seeing that tank back there. What is that? So this is my leopard gecko. Um and her name is Chuck. <laughs> uh <laughs> she she was a uh he well, we thought it was a he until it was a she and she's 16 years old so she's oh, a 16 wow. year old leopard gecko nice yeah i she's she's pretty awesome honestly she's uh she's probably the most um <laughs> the easiest pet that i own i think i feed her once a week and uh those lights kick on automatically i think my electric bill from her maybe cost me you know 50 cents of uh, a month <laughs> and uh we get along great awesome <laughs> well, um thank you jeff for yeah. you know coming on the live stream and uh you know everybody buy fish from fish hotel and yeah and, and, and he's on the forum he's got a website i'm actually planning on uh i'll need to uh, coordinate with you we'll probably come visit maybe sometime in september yeah that'll be cool. we're, gonna, we're gonna do another video with you um, and this time it'll be live in person and we'll, we'll just, we'll just going to feature fish, uh, fish hotel. Cool. Yeah. You know, and we, honestly, if, uh, if y'all want a quick little tour of the fish hotel or whatever, we have an absolutely tiny YouTube video or channel, um, that you can jump on over there. And I think the last one I did was maybe two months ago or a month ago. And I just walked around the, the place and had the camera. So. If you ever just want to see, 
actually see what I'm working with and see our quarantine systems and all that stuff, you can check out just a, a little bit info there. And then everything I do is on the forum. So uh, any builds that we do or anything uh, that we do or any information that I know, that's where you're going to find it. So someone asked, Humble, I'm new. Where do we contact you outside of here? Uh, you go to humble.fish. It's mm -hmm. just it's just simple humble.fish. You join the forum, and, and I'm on there is Humblefish. And yep. uh, uh, Jeff is on there, and we have there's, – there's a lot of people that are in the, on this live. Yeah, there's an awesome, awesome, awesome yeah. community. Yep. Awesome community. So, like, kind of like this YouTube channel kind of goes to – with the forum. They're sort of hand-in-hand. Yep. Um, to kind of help promote one another. So, okay. So one last thing I want to say uh, before we sign off here um, in two weeks, my next live stream is going to be with smarter reefs. We're going to learn more about they're one Who's of the, um, the, the vendors on the forum, one of the dry good vendors on the forum okay. and uh, smarter reefs and their website is smarterreefs.com. And we're going to learn more about that company and the products they sell and, and, and meet the owner and that is going to be Tuesday, June the 6th at 8 p.m. Eastern. So in exactly two weeks, June the 6th at 8 p.m., we will be uh, I'll be interviewing Smarter Reefs and we'll cool. learn about about that company. Um, and also, um, I'm going to post on the forum as well, but I, I kind of want to get into a rotation where like, you know, every two weeks I interview a vendor and then every two weeks I just interview a regular hobbyist. You know, we mm -hmm. kind of go vendor, regular hobbyist. You know, we interviewed um, Andrew two weeks ago. So um, anyone that's watching this, if you think you have a story to tell, um, if you want to be on the live stream and just talk about um, your experiences in the hobby, you want to talk about your aquariums, reach out to me on the forum and we'll get you um, on the schedule for the live stream. We'll be doing these every two weeks for the foreseeable future. Very so cool. if you want to come on the show, just come on the show. You don't have to be an influencer. Yeah. You don't have to be anything. You just can and be. And honestly, it was so relaxed, you guys. Like, all it is is just talking to Bobby for an hour. So don't feel intimidated. Don't feel anything crazy. I felt a little intimidated myself, but truthfully, it's just a hangout session. And that's kind of what I think the intention of this yep. is, is just to kind of sit back, have a discussion about fish and whatever that in particular person is uh, specializes in. But mostly it's just hanging out with a buddy and kind of hanging out for an hour with whoever wants to join us. I think there's a whopping, you know, 30 people or whatever that are hanging out with us now, but yes. Yeah. It's, it's just a real relaxed, fun environment. So I encourage anybody to jump on here and I mean, even just a, a talk over a, a 200 gallon tank is always fun. Yeah, exactly. And you know, some people might have a reef tank or a predator tank or they're in the seahorses. I mean, we just, we just want to make this fun and relaxing and just, you know, we just want to kick back and just talk for an hour or two. That's it. That's cool. Very cool. cool. So, okay. Well, thank you, Jeff. And thank you everyone uh, for watching and for participating. And uh, we'll see you in two weeks on the live stream. But in the meantime, we will see you on the forum. We're on there every awesome. single day. Awesome. See you guys. Good night, everyone.